pioneer, a word that was used in the Middle Ages to refer to a foot soldier in the infantry. Since the infantry led the military, this word has evolved to mean someone who tries to do something novel for the first time. Someone who treads the uncharted. My journey from my hometown, Allahabad, to this stage has been a result of a series of decisions that I have taken, and some of them pushed me to be a pioneer. I was in the sophomore year of my high school when I came across this list of top engineering colleges in the world. My first reaction to this list was A, why aren't Indian colleges ranked as highly as I thought they would be? And B, how do I get admitted to these colleges, the top ones, the best ones? So I started doing my research. And it turned out that I was imagining myself being a part of the communities at these universities before even I was admitted. Maybe it was the naivety of being 15 that I did not realize the challenges that lay ahead. I did not know what SAT was. I did not know how to study for TOEFL. And I did not understand the concepts of letters of recommendation. Things were so bad in my, my hometown because there was no culture of going abroad after high school. My teachers didn't know how to help me either. To a point that I had to go to New Delhi to get books. And I swear, when I entered that bookstore, I knew that the competition was really stiff. I was competing with the best students who also had resources. Resources like tutors, counselors, and programs continuously preparing them for these exams and a college life abroad. Resources to which I only got a glimpse of. So I came back to Allahabad, and I doubled my efforts. I learned all the words I thought College Board could ask me. I ended up doing math, because I love math, and I wrote my own essays, and I graded them too. And my writing score told me that I'm not my best critic. In, in any case, I worked hard, and I thought I was making progress. I went back to Delhi to take the exam, and I thought I did well except I didn't. I flunked it. I got a score that, according to the online forums I was a part of, was not Ivy League material, was not a score that would get me to these top colleges that I was dreaming of. And that brings me less to lesson number one in the story. Struggling is OK. When you are trying to do something new for the first time, you will struggle. You will fail, not just once, probably multiple times. But make sure you're passionate about it, because that is your passion which will take you through. So struggle. Struggling is cool. So I came back, and I went to my mother. And I told her that I don't know what to do next. And she was super cool about it. She's like, take the SATs again. I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a good option. Because she didn't see, I have a feeling that she didn't realize what was exactly that I was trying to do. And my parents have confessed this themselves. They told me, oh, we never thought that you could make it. We just supported you anyways. <laughs> we just thought that this is a part of teen angst, you know, or a rebellion phase that you're going through. But the phase never ended. The phase is still there. This fire to do something new, the fire to bring about a change, and that phase is the reason why they are sitting in the audience somewhere. I can't see them. But that phase is the reason why I'm here. Thank you. So I prepared harder. I took the SATs again. I juggled with my schoolwork and SAT preparation, which, by the way, work on completely different syllabi. And I did well. Maybe my hard work paid off. Maybe it was good luck, but whatever it was, I was proud to put that score on my college applications. Now comes the tricky part. Till now, I had not told my school authorities about my plans after high school. I was scared. I didn't want to disappoint them. But if I were to take the subject tests in December, I'd be missing school. That means they need to know. And when they did get the air of it, some of them weren't hesitant in letting me know that this is going to ruin my life. 
or why exactly my drama isn't over yet, or am I really sure that this is something I will be able to achieve? Things you probably don't want to say to a graduating senior in high school. And that brings me to lesson number two. Acknowledge your supporters. On your journey, you are going to meet two kinds of people. One, who will support you, who will be happy for you, who will stand by you, the way my parents, the way my sister did it for me. And the others, they don't matter. They do not matter until they have critical feedback for you, which I will address in a bit. So on February 24th, 2011, I get admitted. I get this letter from a place called the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Yeah. <laughs> and it's no brainer that I took the offer and I am here. But there's a caveat. See, I applied to almost 10 schools and I got rejected by nine of them and accepted by one, of course. With this success rate of 10% and no scholarship offer, I realized that this is not practical, that I should end this right now, take a year off and study in India. Because although medical doctors, my parents work for the government for a modest salary, trying to help, trying to provide cheap health care to the public. It was my father. He stepped in as my savior and he told me that he has seen the number of all-nighters I have pulled. He had seen how much hard work I had poured in and that it is only right that I get a chance, that I deserve a chance to see where this opportunity can take me. He convinced me. And 17 years old, I packed my bags and I left for the engineering wonderland. And that brings me to lesson number three. Acceptances matter. Your acceptances matter so much more than your rejections. Because it was the acceptance to the University of Illinois that changed my life, that gave me the top-notch engineering education that I wanted to receive, that gave me the experiences I was seeking as a high schooler, that made me the person I am today. Every now and then, when I cross by the College of Engineering, I can't help but think about the person who said, you know what? Let's give this girl a chance. Let's see what she has to bring to Illinois. Maybe I have met that person. Maybe I haven't. But every day I am grateful that I was given that opportunity. So make the most of the acceptances you receive. So I came here in fall of 2011. And there's something I noticed immediately. The number of men in engineering. I come from an all-girls convent school in India. And now I am among men, so many. <laughs> you would think it's a good thing. No, it wasn't. <laughs> so I hated being one of the only girls in my classes, being one of the 12 girls in the lab, or being one of the 10 girls in a lecture with 100 other, 100 other students. So I wanted to get to the roots of this. And I took upon myself the responsibility of writing a research paper. In my research, which was basically doing literature review, I found out that there's one theme that occurs again and again. The fact that women do not see themselves represented in the STEM fields is what ends up holding them back because they do not see themselves represented as a successful entity. We hardly have any female professors, female deans, female CEOs who can act like our role, mo role models. See, I was lucky, and I know I come from a place of privilege. My mother, she's a doctor. My sister is an engineer. My first math professor at U of I was female. My first ECE professor was a female. My ECE grad advisor is a female. I never had lack of role models in my life, but not many women are that lucky. So I came up with a solution. I said, let's make a statue. Let's make a female engineer statue, put it on the engineering cord, and let the message go loud and clear to the rest of the world that here at Illinois, we endorse dreams, and we endorse hard work. 
irrespective of your identity, you can also be an engineer. Someone like me, someone like you, someone like your daughter, your sister, your friend, your mother can be an engineer and can bring changes, can make change, changes happen in the society. So I took this idea to the College of Engineering and I took it to the Illinois Student Senate. I also started an online petition. And in that process, there were certain things that I learned. All of these sources backed the cause. And as we moved forward with the project, I realized that the discussions were moving forward in the social media as well. And this one post I remember very vividly, there were 30 negative comments. And I, I was scared. I was scared to read them. Because I realized that I have never been put on a pedestal like that before. They questioned the very need of promoting diversity in engineering, of getting a statue, and some even questioned my intentions. So I called up my friend. And I said, hey, dude, I don't know how to deal with this. How do I deal with these feelings? And she pointed out something that I had missed, something very tiny. There were 600 likes on that article. That's 2,000% more than the number of negative comments. The, the community liked the idea, and they endorsed it. So I decided to move further. And that brings me to the next lesson in this story, be objective. Be objective and listen to your critics. Because their opinions do not define you, but their very, those very opinions can, make you, can help you make your argument more robust. That's exactly what I did. I sat down and I read through each and every comment and I answered those very questions that the skeptics had hurled at me. I prepared the answer so that in future, if someone asks me, why do we need diversity in engineering, I have an answer. I have an answer why we should get a statue. Try me. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I, I moved forward and I decided to take it very objectively. See, as a grad student, I cannot help but draw parallels between doing the uncharted and research, because they are the same thing. You try to do something new, you probably suck at it. And then you decide to seek help. You go to your advisor, you go to your lab mates, you go to your group members. You try to make something work, you come up with a first draft. That first draft goes to reviewers. Those reviewers critique it. When you get those comments back, you be objective. Read through those comments and publish. Or you can choose to give a TEDx talk the way I am doing. But in any case, do not hold yourself back from doing the uncharted. The way in research, even if you do not have the optimal solution, you should still publish. Because others can know what to do and what not to do. Similarly, when you're doing the uncharted, share your experiences. And I know because I have done this personally. Four years ago, a student, again from a small city in India, I don't know where he was from. He was from south of India, from somewhere. He wanted to do the same thing. He wanted to attend one of the best schools in engineering. And he seeked help. And I shared my experiences with him. And he made it. He made it to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Looks like UFI has like a thing of collecting people like me, which is super cool. I like people like me. <laughs> So that's lesson number five, do the uncharted. It doesn't have to be something that no one has ever done before. It just has to be something you haven't done yet. You never know when the ending of your uncharted could be the beginning of someone else's. So life, engineering, and research keeps us throwing at, in the same abyss again and again. And what that abyss has to offer is we don't know. And the only way out is to engineer it, to try different solutions, to try so many solutions until we find the one, the very best one, the one that works. And in that process, it's OK to seek help. It's OK to ask people who have more experience than you to say, hey, can you lend me a hand? But do not give up because that's where success comes from. 
by not giving up. So when I pack my bags next, figuratively, I will know that there is nothing as powerful as human emotions. Our determination, our resilience, our hopes, our abilities to be stronger than our fears and adversities, our willingness to love unconditionally are what makes us humans. And that is my idea worth spreading. Thank you.